How's it going guys? Dale the Artist here and I thought I'd make a quick video to show you guys how to go about lighting an interior environment inside of Unreal Engine 5.1 utilizing Lumens lighting system. So I've seen a couple videos online that try to show you how to do it but they were either outdated or current but they started with a pre-existing lighting setup and kind of just walked you through why or how they did it versus starting from bare bones beginning. Now what I have in this scene is a 3D environment and a third person character and that's it. So with that being said, we have our pitch black screen. Let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna do is go to the place actors tab and select the lights icon. And then I'm gonna drag and drop a point light into the 3D scene. And now I'm gonna use the move tool. And if you guys don't have this move icon, just press W on your selected point light. And we're gonna just reposition this somewhere. Every scene's gonna vary. So with that being said, this is where I want it. I'm gonna increase the intensity over in the details tab. I'll just max it out as well as the attenuation radius so we can um, shine it in a, you know, in more coverage. And once I'm satisfied with this, I'm gonna press the play button here at the top, right click on the 3D scene and press F11 to maximize it. And I'm gonna navigate around the scene with the WASD keys. And I just wanna show you guys something that's going to be happening in our scene of default. So if we go into the shadow area just right here and uh, stop moving, you see gradually the scene gets really dark and dim lit. But if you rotate around and just look at the light, it's going to start increasing. And this is uh, the light adapting to the environment with the auto exposure enabled from default. So Unreal Engine's idea behind this was to make it similar to how our, our eyes work in real life in the real world. If you're in a dim lit area or dark environment and you go into a, a, a well lit area, your eyes have to adjust to the surroundings. So that's what they were trying to mimic with this feature. So let's press escape on the keyboard to exit out of play mode. Press F11 to minimize the 3D scene. And I want to drag in a directional light. So if you just go to the lights and number one here is directional light. And if you can't, for some reason, find it, you can just type it here at the top and then just drag it into the scene. And really quick, you're gonna see that now our scene has lighting, right? So let's press play and look and just don't move your character. You see how over time, gradually, our scene's getting brighter and that will give you a false lighting. So we wanna get rid of that shortly. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that using a post process volume. So uh, let's press escape and get out of there. Really quick, something I wanna do is show you guys. So not all interiors don't have windows. So I made this intended for everyone. So if your environment does have a window, you can see that there's no environment on the outside. And that's due to the atmosphere. So what we need to do is type in atmosphere, right? M A T M O and just sky atmosphere, drag and drop this into the scene. And very quick, you see we have um, a sky in our atmosphere now. So we have our sky in the background. And if you rotate around, you see that we still have that auto exposure issue that's going on. Now to get rid of that, we need to add a post processing volume. So type in post, you're gonna see process volume, drag that into the scene. We'll just drag it right here. Doesn't really matter where you put it, but I'm gonna show you guys something really quick. Um, with that selected, if you go to the details tab, you wanna go down to, you see exposure, the exposure drop down here. And you wanna check these two values, this min and max. EV, which is environment. And for the one on top, the min will be the minimum. And we're going to type in one, press enter. And with the max, we're going to type in one as well, press enter. Now, nothing happened, right? But if you, you know, navigate and look through the box, you're going to see that it gets dark. And this is what we actually did to the environment, but we can't see it because its bounding box is really small. So what we need to do is let's just um, go out of the area, um, let the auto adjust take its place. 
And what we want to do is scroll down to the bottom, or you can just type in the search um, tab here, just type in infinite, I-N-F, and you're going to see we have the infinite extent unbound. So basically what this does is extend this um, bounding box infinitely. So we're going to tap this um, and check this on, and you're going to see it's going to get dark like how it looked when we looked inside this previously. So with this being done, we don't have that auto exposure thing happening. So if we press play, you're going to see that we're in a dark environment and it's not getting lighter. And this is what you want so we don't get any false lighting as we move forward. So let's press escape. So now we can add a skylight to the scene. So let's go to where we type post with the X. And let's type in sky. You're going to see that skylight. And let's drag and drop this skylight to the scene. And notice that we have now some light from the outside coming inside, but it's really, really dim lit. So we need to play with some parameters. So what we can do with the skylight um, selected is adjust some of these sources. So you can um, select source type and change this to specified cube map. And then we can go where it says none, hit that drop down, and we can choose the HDRI. And I'm just going to choose this sunset so I can get this type of tone. And notice we can't see anything happening because um, it's so low right now, the um, intensity. So let's change the intensity scale. You see that it now lights our environment. And one thing that I like to do is use the exterior light to light the environment so we don't have to um, waste so much uh, resources pressing, you know, and adding lights to the scene because this can get really expensive as you guys see later on. So let's do that. Let's go back. So we can swap between the post-processing, the skylight, and directional light to get something of our choosing. And I actually like this light setting, so I'm going to press play. You can see that this actually looks good. Let's press F11 to maximize this. And this is almost perfect. But if you rotate around, you see it's coming too hot from this area and the behind us. So we can adjust that as we move forward. Every environment is going to differ depending on, you know, if you have windows or not, how your um, scene looks. So I'm just going to rotate around, run around, get a better look at this. And for areas like this is where we want to add spotlights and point lights. We just want the exterior light and environment to do the heavy lifting for us. So with that being said, I'm going to press escape to get out of play mode. Press F11 to minimize this. And let's play with a couple more parameters. So if you're going for a foggy look outside, we can add a exponential um, height fog to it. So we can type in EXP. And then we can drag this exponential height fog. And this is, you know, optional depending on your environment. But you can see when I start to drag it, what's happening, it's getting foggy in the distance. So if you want a foggy environment, this is what you would use for that. And you can change the fog density here in the details tab by dragging this up and down. And also if you play with the height of the fog, you can make it be towards the ground. So Raising this up lowers the actual height of the fog, and lowering it raises the height in the viewport. So it's kind of counterintuitive if you think about it like that. So what the exponential fog does is, you know, it adjusts the height of um, the scatter that comes between, you know, the light from the outside. So just keeping that in mind, and I'm going to just toggle this off because I don't need to use this right now. You can kind of see that here on this wall. This is super bright. At no point should your light be that bright coming in. I'm going to soften it. So you can mess around with the post processing to affect that. And you can you get the, um, the eye icon to hide or disable to see what's affecting what. And with this post processing, what you could do is um, change the bloom. If you go down to bloom, go to method, change it from standard to convolution if you need to. Um, I, usually, I usually leave it here and just turn the intensity on. Um, and I toggle it up to get a certain look. This gives it like a dreamy look, if need be. So you see what it actually does. 
Now we can have this on just slightly so it's not too overwhelming. What I want to do is go back to the um, to the HDRI and with the HDRI and that's done in the skylight. So you can go to the outliner, search up skylight. You're going to see it here and not sky atmosphere. Atmosphere is for the outside exterior. The skylight is the outside, but it's lighting the inside. So with the skylight here, we can go back up to the top. And where we have this HDRI, we can check on real time. And you may or may not get an error that pops up. And this is um, real time capture. So this is the real lighting, um, natural lighting here. And it's super bright, super extensive. And you can also turn this down with the intensity scale. Remember, we turned it up when we weren't using it. So we can get this level but if you want to check this on you have to now readjust the intensity scale so depending if you're going for light or dark but if you change um, with this checked on the real um, real-time capture you can use this uh, light color to now light your environment so you can get something like this go for sunset and it's more optimizable for you know a specific color that you want to go for. So we have this here. This is about the lighting that I want. I don't want too bright. We could even make it even brighter. It doesn't really matter. Just once you're satisfied, you can move forward. I'm going to hit OK. And also, you can change the angle of which the light enters the room. And mine is here. You can see how it's more bright here than it is over here. Notice we have that cast shadow in the back behind the cabinets. And if you change the source cube map angle, you can rotate the environment. And notice we can't see it happening because we have the real world lighting checked. If you uncheck it, you can see it a little bit easier. You see what it's doing? And it does this with this unchecked, but it's just harder to see visually as to what's actually happening. And something else I want to let you guys be aware of, if your scene is dark and you want to have more light, what you can do, and this is what I do nine times out of ten, if I have a, a huge map, I let the exterior light pass through the mesh. And you can do that very easily. So let's take this area here. Let's say you want more light in this general area. What you can do is select a mesh. And you can type in AFF, which is Effect. And you can tap and you can uncheck effect distance field lighting. You're gonna see it's gonna get brighter in there because it's now the light is ignoring this mesh and it's still shining through. So this is what you want to go for if that's what you need for more lighting. But also with this happening, you're gonna get more lighting fighting with other lights in the scene. So just be cautious with uh, the intensity of the lights. So let's go to skylight. You can toggle it on to see what it's actually affecting. And I want to bring this intensity down to about here. And I had a spotlight or a point light that I want to get rid of. And lastly, what I want to do, since I got rid of this point light, we can grab a rect light. And this is a light coming from a plane, flat surface. And we can just press E to rotate. We can rotate this going down. And if you want to snap it, like, as far as like the degrees, you can snap rotation here. So. You can snap it on 90 degrees so you don't have to manually do it. Press W to go back to the move tool. And we can reposition this as we see fit. And I want to light these uh, countertops up. So I'm going to hover over this area. Get rid of any text you may have here. And let's just increase the intensity. As well as the attenuation radius. So we can light this more genuinely. And we can place this anywhere we want. So we can do like a general area there, but this is good for what I want to go for. 
and I may grab a point light, drag this in these dark areas that can't be, you know, lit by the environment. And you can change you know, the softness and things of that sort and also change the color of the lighting. So if you want like a, a more grotesque story or tell a story with the lighting, you can do so as well. Just select the light you want, go to color and adjust it. So depending on like, you know, what you're going for. So I'm just gonna press play really quick. Actually, let me light this a little bit better, this area. Bring this intensity up a little bit more. And remember, if this bounding area collides with another uh, bounding area of a light, you're going to get this cancel light um, icon to let you know that lights are fighting with one another. Let's bring this down. I was going for like a horror environment. This is something I would use. And the shortcut to put down and place a point light is holding down the L key on the keyboard and just clicking on the surface that you want it to be applied in or on. And you can duplicate it by holding down Alt and dragging the move tool in that direction. So now let's press play. Let's see what we got. Looks good. A little light in here. And we could uh, increase this lighting in here as well. Cool, cool, cool. But notice that this stove isn't um, reflecting. This is a metallic um, material and it's not reflecting. So let's talk about reflections. Let's press escape. And to fix all this kind of stuff, what you wanna do is press F11 so we can minimize this. Let's go to the post processing. So select the post processing. Let's go down and you need to go to reflections and enable lumen. All the way down here. I could just type it in, but I want you guys to get used to, uh, you know, seeing where these things are. So let's turn on global illumination, reflections. Turn this method on, and you see how now our metallics are now lit, and we're using lumen. Switching to something else will, you know, disable it. So you don't have to put down reflection captures now using um, Lumen because now we have that. So this is how you light your environment. So hopefully you guys like this tutorial. I got a little bit carried away and got a little bit longer than I intended. But um, yeah, this is how you light your interiors. If you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Comment and I'll catch you in the next one.